Hello horror hounds and firstly did you enjoy that? Firstly thank you a massive thank you to the YouTube channel uh, Camp Death 3 the final summer <laughs> the, the official YouTube channel for, uh, for Camp Death 3 for doing that intro for me so very very kind of you uh, it's beyond my capability knocking up something like that so I really do appreciate it hope you guys like it and what I wanted to do uh, for this video as you've already read which is why you've clicked on the link another uh, horror memory the unmasking of the Phantom of the Opera uh, the 1925 film starring Lon Chaney uh, re-released with uh, with sound in 1929 I would have seen this film as a child. It would have been one of my first introductions to to, uh, to horror movies, the kind of horror movies that I would have been allowed to watch. Uh, this, at the later Universal Classic Monster series, and then as I got older, upgrading to the Hammer movies. Uh, Nosferatu would have been thrown in there somewhere in the mix then a quantum leap to, to the omen and then to, to the nightmare on Elm streets and the friday the 13th uh, uh, and all of that but uh, the unmasking scene uh, where lon cheney's face is revealed from that movie is one of the most delicious and, and thrilling uh, moments in my formative years of falling in love uh, with horror movies so i wanted to sort of share that memory with you i've coupled together some phantom facts for you, some Lon Chaney facts. Um, <clears throat> basically, Lon Chaney was, was in charge of his own makeup. He was, he was allowed to do whatever he wanted to do. Uh, he wanted to look very skull-like. He painted his eye sockets black. He had, uh, the tip of, he had the tip of his nose pulled up. Sometimes, uh, some reports I've read, is he uses fish skin and glue, glues it up. Other times he's got wires up there, caused him nosebleeds, caused him no amount of pain. Um, he would he built up his cheeks uh, to give the skull effect, obviously the fake teeth. Uh, and um, <clears throat> by all accounts, the first time when audiences saw this, they were fainting, screaming and the like. Uh, what he looked like, was kept secret. It wasn't in any of the promotional material. Uh, you, you had to go and see the movie to see it. You would not have been prepared for this moment. Lon Chaney apparently uh, didn't let his uh, co-star uh, uh, see it. Uh, Mary Philbin, the first time she saw what he looked like was on camera, so her, her reaction is a genuine one. That is an anecdote from the film's cameraman, Charles Van Enger, uh, an associate of Cheney's. According to uh, Van Enger, he tells another story where um, he became a, a test subject of Cheney's. Uh, Cheney asked him to come to his dressing room without telling him why, uh, and he got there and Cheney had his back to him. This is like the best prank of all time. And, um, you know, Lon, what is it? What do you want? And he spins around and he's in full phantom face. Uh, and he says, quote, I almost wet my pants. I fell over a stool and landed flat on my back. Cheney laughed so hard. And Van Enger, who by then was mad as hell, yelled, are you nuts? Unable to clearly talk with his fake teeth in, Cheney spits them out and says, never mind, Charlie. You already told me what I needed to know. The beauty of this moment is I think it kind of encapsulates uh, the, the compulsion and revulsion that we feel when, uh, as lovers of horror, we're, we're, we're drawn to it and we're drawn to it because we, we want it to shock us, want it to scare us. It very rarely does. Moments like this do. Um, the, the, the thrill, the, the frisson as a young child watching the mask coming off and the face being revealed, and it's it's ghastly, it's eerie, and it's it's ghastly. But before that, the the play that the film has, and the curiosity that drives Christine as she goes towards the back of his mask to 
to fiddle with the ribbons and then he moves and she goes uh pulls back and then and goes in uh, for a second go um we are her we want to, we want to see beneath the mask we want to see the horror we want to be scared there's a push and a pull and there's a play uh with this scene that i think really encapsulates when horror is good when horror does what it's supposed to do this really encapsulates the relationship between the story and us as the viewer we're, we're actively engaged as or we should be uh, when, when we're watching films like this. And, and films should try and actively engage us. And there's a contract there and, and there's, you know, okay, you'll take us places and we'll go and you'll, you'll scare us and, and we, we want to see it, but oh, maybe we don't want to see it uh, too much. And that dynamic and that tension in this little clip that I'm gonna give you because, um, it's in the public domain now, so I can I can use this clip, I think, with a clear conscience without YouTube coming down on me like a ton of bricks. So rather than talk about it anymore, why don't we why don't we see it?